All right, bringing you up to date. What an exciting day Good Friday was yesterday. First time in history that you could actually say that it was a good Good Friday. The real one, of course, was uh, there was nothing good about it. However, we we're over to, right? <laughs> yeah, I was typing away there on his laptop. Now, of course, Andrea Anna, our champion to the, uh, to the fight once again. I'll read to you uh, what it is that uh, Andrea accomplished once I go back and find. Uh, things are s here it is. Okay, now this all started yesterday afternoon, of course. And it, well, you know, first thing yesterday morning up and into the fight. Just all of us. Well, Yas been emailing his buddy <laughs> Hank. <laughs> well, Karen and Joel and uh, the rest of you have been tweeting, emailing to every corner of the earth. Joel sent out hundreds of emails last night. He's been uh, banned off Facebook for a few days uh, for spamming too much. Apparently it wasn't spam, he was emailing. Anyway, so here it goes. I'll read to you. I'll read to you the latest. Actually, the easiest would be just to go into my page rather than try to sift through all of the private messages because there's so many of them in this battle. Whoa! Hey, honey, this is what went by me yesterday. This, it, not this big, of course, but uh, <laughs> this is what Joel says. Is this like the one you saw yesterday? It's big, right? We went for, yeah, well, it was a small stick, but it was just like that, but a small one. Um, <laughs> I went for a walk out. By the beach yesterday, the tide was up. We walked right out there. It was shallow, and I was standing out in the water up to about thigh level. And I thought to walk in after a while. <laughs> and uh, um, this is deep. This is at thigh level. Uh, where's all of my? Oh, here it is. Here's the conversation. Yeah, so the stingray goes by and passes about that far away from me as I'm walking back in. All right, so uh, uh, somewhere along the line at some part in the day, I'm reading about uh, the head of the Vatican Bank that Benedict appointed a German man, Ernst von Freyberg, and he's of the sovereign military order of Malta as well, so he's a Knights of Malta. Anyway, I grabbed the contact details for the uh, Sovereign Military Order of Malta, Magistral Palace in uh, Rome, Italy, with the contact details, and I sent it to Andrea. I was trying to fax them, and had the fax numbers and everything, and our fax has been hot, <laughs> well, isolated, if you like. Now I'm suddenly not able to fax to Rome at all. This happened when I was trying to fax to um, Iran around Christmas time and Armenia. Just it would go nowhere, tell me that the number, or, or tell me that the uh, a bizarre. However, later, after I forgot about f for a few weeks and went back to do it all again, in other words, I got them off guard, they went through no problem at all. Well, yesterday to Rome, there were no faxes allowed to go through, even though I'd been able to get through three weeks ago before the conclave. As you know. Now, um, so I, I give it to her and I tell her, you know, please fax. She says, okay, I will fax it. And since Ernst von Rheinberg, uh, Freiburg has his private estate, a castle in my country, one hour away to drive, I will go there. Maybe I can talk to him or at least leave this message there uh, with the ask to forward it to him. I say, Capital Leanders, yes, 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 go girl, tell him that Benedict needs him for strength. And then the conversation continues. 
she says, okay, I will go. Oh, one re um, we talked about the facts, and I said, no, but I'm not doing anything wrong. A um, uh, bit of conversation. She says, okay, facts to Italy I have sent now, and uh, we'll leave now to Almendingen, Germany. Maybe the phone number of Ulrich is his father, and then she had done the phone search to find the number, etc., and the address. So she leaves information uh, from the web about Freya Berg in his position as head of the Vatican Bank. Okay, then a couple of hours later, she said it was about an hour drive, so at 7.11, she, 7.16, she had left her last information, and then at 10, 10.01, so a little under three hours later, she says, okay, I could give Mr. Ernst von Freiburg the documents personally with your email address. More later, driving home now. <laughs> so then she gets home and at 11.35 she writes, Sorry I am late. When I was arriving in the castle garden, it's a little one, there were just coming the parents of him towards me. I asked if they were Freya von Freiburg and he answered yes. I said I have to deliver an urgent message for your son. He asked me, the parents were very friendly and open, where I do come from and then he said, oh, and you just did the long way drive to bring this message? <laughs> His son lived in the house near. I stood and the father called his son. When Ernst von Freiburg arrived, I said to him that I have an urgent message for him, an apostolic letter from Pope Emeritus Benedict, and that all would be in the envelope. He took the envelope, wished me good Easter, and went upstairs. The older one, the father and his wife, wanted to know more, were just heavily wondering, and I told them some, but then the son called out of the window and told them to come upstairs immediately. <laughs> so I said goodbye and went, was so excited. I, I should have said then that Pope Emeritus needs their help. I, I'm sorry. I hope he will accept the message. And then uh, she talks a little about the, uh, she just said, I've strayed the apostolic letter, a signature from the Pope and Benedict a seal. I did what I could. Uh, <laughs> and then she says, and then she says, oh, I, I, I should remark it was just lunchtime when I came. I think the parents wanted to go to lunch to the son, so maybe because of this, he called them to come upstairs. Hello. <laughs> I don't think so. He's is just... that the same this thing from the Pope? <laughs> well, he, he has seen... Now, this is a Knights of Malta. They are all about the Trinity, Jesus Christ, Holy Mother Mary, and protecting Jesus. <laughs> So this, this is what he saw along with the copy of the apostolic letter that was sent to us from Benedict, parts of which are up on the net for the world to see, but uh, I sent the PDF to Andrea for her own use. So that's all very exciting and Andrea of course included her own cover letter and this is what she had to say. This is a very urgent message from Mr. Uh, Ernst Freya von Freiburg. Please forward this message to him immediately. My name is Andrea Leinick. I'm the lady who has got an email audience with the Pope Emeritus Benedict the 16th after, after posting my video on his Facebook site. And then she has the link to her own Facebook. I, um, YouTube rather, I told him that Christ is back on earth. I told him this on 9th of March 2013. I was the messenger on behalf of Mr. Brian Levy Gerlardi Marshall. From this day on, Pope em Emeritus Benedict XVI talked via email with the Christ, Mr. Brian Levy Gerlardi Marshall, daily. Before the conclave has begun, he was already convinced that he is Christ and did upload his picture on his Facebook site. And she's got the link to the site. Uh, this should read Cardinal Dolan. It was Timothy Cardinal Dolan, the Archbishop of New York, has been informed from Mrs. Marshall before the beginning of the conclave. It was days before. He didn't investigate it. And I did that because I phoned, I got his private email address 
from his uh, personal secretary, Kathleen, in New York, and I told her the news that the Christ was back. She was really excited, and I did say to her, you might uh, remember the upload, that all eyes are on Cardinal Dolan. What will he do? Well, of course, he did nothing, and he had set himself up as the, you know, um, media spokesperson for before the conclave. That's the way he, he seemed to uh, set himself up, and... He had the information as well and did nothing. He should have stopped, he should have reported it to the conclave, stopped everything. Because I actually told him in the, um, everything that I sent to him that Benedict knows. I told the world Benedict knows, Benedict knows. So, um, so that makes the conclave illegitimate and the results null and void. On, um, Yes, so Cardinal Dolan has been informed from Mrs. Marshall before the beginning of the conclave. He didn't investigate it. On the 25th of March, then Pope Benedict published his apostolic letter, which I now send to you. Pope Benedict got the health protocols of the Christ, Mr. Marshall, and feels now already much better. So there is now no reason more for the resignation of Pope Benedict. Because the new Pope Francis doesn't acknowledge the Christ at all and even wants to break up the Vatican Bank and cooperates with the Zionist Jews, he has to be stopped immediately. I urge you to get in action and to do the necessary. The following sites are the apostolic letter from Pope Benedict and a picture of the reincarnated Christ, an overlay of his picture over the Shroud of Turin. For more information, please contact with Brian Vanagar, Lightly Marshall, and Galway's email address. God bless you. So, that's our Andrea Anna. I said, well done, you're a champion. <laughs> she says, thanks, I love you. Please, Yahweh, bless my work that it shall bear fruit. I said, it has and it will. The distance from the castle to here was... Uh, no, to here was testimony, wasn't it? To, oh, sorry, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah, we first measured to here and then Yah's place of birth. But to here it was testimony. And of course, that's what uh, Andrea delivered. It was the testimony. This is the testimony of Pope. Pope Emeritus Benedict, renamed Peter, calling him Holy Father Peter. <clears throat> but the measure in distance, nautical miles, to Yah's birthplace was 8888, the Jesus number. Andrea says, oh wow, while driving, I always heard your voice saying it's all good. <laughs> and it is, it's all good. So uh, I just said to her, you're a knight in white satin. And then, of course, this morning I wake up and she's left the uh, video link, uh, read all about it, a, a song that she was listening to on the way out there with the lyrics, which was... Um... Actually, I'll go over and read the lyrics. You all need to, to hear this. This is, this is what it's all about, and this is Andrea's song. <clears throat> Up on the is she? Cat's on the counter. Of course she is. But she knows we can't get up at the moment. So she... <laughs> oh, okay. Alright, I'll just have this playing softly yeah. in the background while I read the lyrics. Yeah. So this is the song that Andrew was listening to on her drive out to the head of the Vatican Bank. You've got the words to change a nation, but you're biting your tongue. You've spent a lifetime stuck in silence, afraid to say nothing. If no one ever hears it, how are we going to learn your song? So come on, come on, come on, come on. You've got a heart as loud as lions, so why let your voice be tamed? Maybe we're a little different, there's no need to be ashamed. You've got the light to fight the shadows, so stop hiding it away. Come on, come on, come on. I want to sing, I want to shout, I want to scream till the words dry up. So put it all in all of the papers, I'm not afraid. They can read all about it, read all about it. And then at night we're waking up the neighbours while we sing away the blues. Making sure that we remember, yeah, because we all matter too. If the truth has been forbidden, then we're breaking all the rules. So come on, come on, come on. Let's get the TV and the radio 
to play our tune again. It's about time we got some airplay of our version of events. There's no need to be afraid. I will sing with you, my friend. Come on, come on. I want to sing, I want to shout, I want to scream till the words dry up. So put it in all of the papers. I'm not afraid. They can read all about it, read all about it. Yay, we're all wonderful people. So when do we all get so fearful? Now we're finally finding our voices, so take a chance, come help me sing this song. And now we're finally finding our voices, so take a chance, so help me come sing this. I want to sing, I want to shout, I want to scream till the words dry out. So put it in all the pages, I'm not afraid. And then it continues. And of course, straight after Andrea delivered her letter, I sent an email to Tim Richards of the CBC in Canada, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation in Canada. I know it got to him because I sent one to an email to Marissa Nelson and she sent back, she's on holiday, sent it to Tim. And it was the breaking news that I published earlier on the site with an update, words from from Brian updating and then of course with the news that this information has gone out all across Europe, around the world to the Ignatian spirituality communities all around the world as well as of course the Knights of Malta and now it was in the hands of the head of the Vatican Bank, a German man appointed by Benedict. Who knows that the Antichrist is occupied seat right now, not for much longer. His one hour of glory is about to end. He will be he will be introducing a television program that will be aired at uh, UTC no, it's 15.10 UTC plus one, so that's the time in Rome on Saturday the 30th, it's now the 30th, Adam's 22nd birthday. Pope Benedict, before he left, no, it was after he even left office, it was on the 3rd of March, he allowed the television cameras to go in and film the Holy Shroud of Turin. So, such a personal icon is this shroud to the Holy Father and always has been. He allowed the TV cameras to go in and film it as it has never been filmed before and it's being released this afternoon on Easter Saturday in Rome time. Now what is interesting is that Francis got the news of the return of the Christ one week ago on March the 23rd. That was that secret meeting he had where the media was not allowed. That's when Benedict gave him the news. So four days late, or, or rather one week later, he's having to give the introduction to the TV program all about the Shroud of Turin. I'll read, read to you the effect this had on one who has the Spirit of God within them. And then, of course, is our beloved Benedict being renamed Peter, calling him Holy Father Peter. Now, the reason he's been renamed Peter is because of the Malachi prophecy that uh, is talking about the 104th Pope, but there's only 111 Popes. So, Speculation is that uh, this uh, Peter the Roman would uh, bring peace and prosperity and so forth, but also it, it states that the uh, Rome, basically as the church is, will be destroyed. And um, in Revelation 17:11, it talks about seven popes. One of the popes is the eighth, but still is. Now, when we look at the moment that uh, Pope Benedict uh, announced his retirement, that date was uh, exactly 84 years, which encompasses the seven popes because it was established and recognised as a city and independent state on uh, uh, February 11th, 1929. February 11th, in uh, 1929. <clears throat> 84 is my name in uh, Gematria. It's also Emmanuel in Gematria. Emmanuel means God with us. Mm. 
So um, there he is. I've said to him that, uh, no, you, you can't retire. I'm not having it. So I'm head of the church. You're the Pope. I chose you. That's it. So uh, as it turns out, um, I renamed him Peter the second. I said it started in Rome, it ends in Rome. Peter was called was the brother, the younger brother, or half brother of Jesus, which no one knows about or no one talks about. But it's easy to once you understand that, you can sniff it out through the Bible and see how it's worded, and that's exactly what Peter was. So uh, Simon. So there is a list of brothers, half brothers, and it's two sisters. But the brothers are named in the New Testament. And uh, Simon, of course, is uh, Simon Peter. So as it turns out, um, I've renamed him Simon Peter to fulfill the prophecy. As it turns out, uh, Rome, the Vatican itself, has been destroyed with Vatican III. And I wrote that for the Pope uh, in 15 minutes. And the original Vatican II had taken over from the Vatican I and changed everything around, basically letting the Jews in and every other religion in as, uh, uh, to get to God is no problem. All you do is got to be good. Yes, it, and, it, it uh, encompasses it. That, that I said, no, no. Jesus forgives There's all only no. one way to God, and that's me. I'm God, so I'm sorry. Mm. So they changed that. So the Jews have done that. Mm. And they were setting up a French cardinal to become Jew, and uh, he was uh, suddenly dropped dead. So that ended their run at that moment. But by putting in this uh, now Bergoglio, Francis, Bergoglio, G O G in the middle. Gog, this is the biblical Gog. They can't help themselves. They have to uh, uh, announce themselves right in your face so that you don't get it. So yeah. he's Gog and Magog. Right? Yeah. Now he's uh, he was runner up in the election that uh, mm -hmm. where Benedict in two thousand and five when Benedict was chosen. Gog, Bergoglio, was the runner-up. Really? Yes, he was then. So well, they've been remember. setting it up for a long time. So that's what the story's all about. So um, Germany, what I'm saying to um, all Germans, is that Hitler won the war. Yes. Because Hitler was a good man. He wasn't this monster. And if you not look around for some of the trolls work against me, you find me sitting there with a pipe having a beer, and uh, mm -hmm. another one where I'm um, sitting beside Hitler and with a swash sticker on my shoulder. Well, the swastika, it comes from uh, Indy. ancient Hindi. Hindi. India. It's all about light, mm. love, laughter. Mm. That's what it means, light, mm. love, laughter. Mm. And uh, it was the Hindi that uh, predicted that Jesus Christ, by name, would be Yahweh, but they called it Yahweh, and Jehovah. Mm. That's where the word Jehovah comes from, from the Hindi. Mm. That um, he would come to the earth, be crucified, and then... Um, Later, the prophecies add that he will be made known in what, 2012 or 13. Mm, yes. And uh, of course, this is what's happening. Yeah. So, uh, if you read Mein Kampf, it's a very good read. If we, just the first two pages is enough to convince you that the compassion of uh, Hitler was such a wonderful, deep thinking man, full of love, mm. that uh, the Holocaust, of course, didn't happen. That was invented by the Jews because if the Jews said it's did happen, then you know they're lying. Yeah. And, uh, Rosenthal interview in 1976. It had been exposed before that, but Rosenthal, the idiot that he was, thought he could get away with uh, bragging about the lie. And it was like, so what? Yeah, of course it's a lie. So what? That was his attitude. Re Joel's re uploaded yeah, the us, interview. Give us the shekels. Make a few shekels. Yeah. Yeah. What's the big, what's the big deal? Because the Jews don't like him being exposed like that. And in the Talmud, it says that if anyone who does expose him, they will yeah, kill him. Yeah, of course he was, he killed, was killed within weeks. Within weeks, yeah. yeah. So uh, the guilt of Germany is alleviated, overturned. No, German, in this instance, between the, 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 the German Pope and our German Andrea, um, the German banker. <laughs> the German banker. Germany is the nation. So, in, in uh, the protocols that I've written uh, for Vatican III, it states that the uh, Vatican will be the authorization point for all monetary uh, printing mm. that will be distributed through all the parishes throughout the world, mm. and that'll be the currency. So, no, what I'm saying to set it up is you get this German printing. I've looked at, at these very sophisticated German printers, and um, 
they're not that expensive, but if you can put them in any uh, area of the world, in any parish where there's a church or a diocese, and uh, if you send a code from the Vatican to print off two or three hundred thousand, um, whatever you want to call it, shekels. Talents. 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 And uh, I've already designed the talent as a matter of fact. Mm. And uh, that was done several years ago. Now, of course, it's the first, it, 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 no longer will oil. Well, the point I was going to try and make here that you just, the, the Vatican will send out the special paper it's going to be printed on, hemp paper. And uh, then it arrives, uh, and then they get the authorization, a coded message from uh, uh, the Vatican, and they print the money that's needed. So currency will be based on the, uh, on the human being rather than the product, the gross national product that they dig out the ground and steal. Mm. Uh, it's going to be based on, on uh, non inflatable, non deflatable uh, mm. money that everyone will have enough. And the churches will be places of healing mm. and um, distribution of the wealth, and uh, also be an employment like a union they have in America and Canada. They have unions, so if you uh, end of a job, you go back to the union hall, you put your name in, you go in in order of how many people are before you. When they are found work, you then get a job. So uh, if there's 30 people before you, there's 30 jobs can become available. You move up to the top of the list. And out you go. There's no hassles, and uh, all corporations are 51% owned by the Vatican. Out of business. So that is Yahweh once again overturning the tables of the money changers, so it's all changers about. occupying the temple. The microcosm that occurred 33 AD, when he went into the temple, his father's house, Yahweh's house, and overturned the tables. Then that was a microcosm for what is occurring now. Because, of course, the temple is the earth, and the money changers are the same Jews who call themselves Jews and are not. Now, I should say also that the, devil. the uh, Jerusalem is already the own, is owned by the Vatican. That's uh, right. This was set up because the Jews were going to put a, uh, a pope in that was Jewish. Mm. And they were thwarted. And that is why this uh, Francis um, just got beat at the post by... Um, and I just found out about that mm. by uh, Benedict uh, in uh, 2005. 2005. Mm. So therefore, uh, it becomes blatantly obvious that uh, they have missed the boat. Mm. The French uh, Jew that was a cardinal, he was going to be the man. He yeah, died. they were setting him up. Mm. Now they're bringing this monster. Uh, who is uh, very well known in Argentina of being in the pocket of uh, the uh, dictators, dictators and the multinational corporations and has uh, in fact caused the deaths of many people. Including Jesuit priests. And that's right. Now he's a Jesuit. Mm. Now the Jesuits have sworn that they will fight to the death mm. uh, and do anything necessary. Uh, even if it was meant that they would spend the eternity in hell uh, they will do what is necessary. So even the unforgivable sin they will do for Jesus, which is a pretty strong uh, oath to take. This is what all Jesuits do. And there's 19, 190,000 of them, and there's 19 stones left on the uh, Great Pyramid, which is representative of 144,000. So uh, the 19,000 represents 190,000 Jesuits. And if you look in Revelation, yeah, there's 19,000 Jesuits around the world. Oh, 19,000 Jesuits. Yeah, in the 19th Then uh, um, each stone numbered 144,000 total. And in the book of Revelation 14, 3 and 4, these are uh, men that are virgins that have not defiled themselves. Defile themselves with women. Mm. And they love the not their they're referring to, of course, is sexual, but it's also uh, not any of the churches of the Great Hall, which mm. is Protestantism. Mm. So that's how it's all shaping up. So it's very interesting. Mm. And uh, it's done deal now. I mean, here we are. I've told the Vatican Bank via Andrea okay. and the Pope. Uh, and he said that he's going to adopt it. The Pope said he's going to adopt it. I've renamed him Peter. And he will destroy the Vatican by Vatican III. All the Jews are out. All of the... Uh, 
religions that say they can buy it. I'll give you one thing that really, really annoyed me was that the Jews required a room in the Vatican that hadn't been blessed so that they could hold their, their prayers. Mm. Right? While there was other um, strange religions where um, the crosses were taken yeah, down. And, armor and the crosses were removed. And mm -hmm. this was all under John Paul II. Now, John Paul II was a monster. Mm. He was elected well, when the uh, sunlight for around was 666 minutes. And he seen me once, that was in Sydney, and uh, I was going to the markets with my wife and all the traffic was banked up and I finally got somewhere to park and I'm bloody annoyed. And uh, I walked down the street to see what the hell the crowds are looking at. And as I stood there amongst these people, uh, the Pope came around his Pope and being his, his eyes locked on me and he went into the look of terror and was frozen on the spot and seemed in his mind to take forever to go the uh, 50, 60 metres past the end of the street and then disappear. And he just looked directly at me and he was frozen in fear. That was December 1986. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'll just wrap up this marvellous extension to the ripping yarn. As, <laughs> as uh, um, Andrea said, oh, yeah, your, your, your Vatican story is such a thriller and it will be a bestseller. I should say, I'm writing to Hank. As I'm writing to Hank, uh, rather as I'm telling a story and writing to the Pope about some of the experiences I had with Hank in Africa, yes. they're quite funny. Uh, I get an email from Hank. He has this, I haven't heard from him for years and years and years, and there he is. So I wrote back and forth. I said, "How?" I said, "How did you find me?" And he said, "I just googled." <laughs> Old geezer with a flabby neck. <laughs> a turkey neck, wasn't it? <laughs> Right, turkey neck. <laughs> so he calls the, the, uh, the email to me as Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll just finish this up with a song that's suddenly decided to play again. Rereading the Roman Pontiff Emeritus Benedict the Sixteenth's response to Mr. Brian Leonard Gallatin Marshall's claim to be Christ. Do I believe that Mr. Brian Leonard Gallatin Marshall is truly Jesus Christ reincarnated? Yes, I do believe he is Jesus Christ reincarnated. You see, many days ago, Mr. Marshall sent me photographs of him and the most holy shroud of Turin. He actually looks so much like that of the holy image on the shroud. There is no other explanation. He is simply the Lord Jesus Christ Almighty as Christos. I was so penetrated with love and compassion from God that I requested the photo I saw to be put in a place of honour somewhere. Another one? Yes. I was told my confidant uploaded it as a cover photo on a page he created as a tribute to me. And out of all of the popes, even my own beloved predecessor, Blessed John Paul II, is so innocent. <laughs> Mr. Brian Marshall chose me to announce to the world his glorious return. That stunned me as well. My short eight-year pontificate is like a mere pe pebble in the shadow of a ginormous stone that is the long 27-year pontificate of blessed Pope John Paul II, yet the reincarnated Christ saw me as a potential Pope. And for that I thank him from the bottom of my heart and wish to one day embrace him in person with my old frail hands. He is the most royal man alive, the true King of Kings, the true Lord of Lords, the true High Priest, and the most holy reincarnated Lord Jesus Christ the Messiah, almighty and everlasting. Have faith in him. So, on so it was Andrea that searched the archives of all of the uh, royal families because they have virtually been erased uh, in England. It's very hard, or even uh, any of the churches that study that sort of thing, the Mormon church, for example. My name has been removed from their records. Yes, Brett did the digging. So she was able that. to backdoor it all. And uh, being a brilliant scholar, uh, she was able to put it together in a way that was presentable to the Pope. And uh, it could see the genetic connections. Yeah. So, so exciting right. times that we live in. Thrilling. So I to hang at the moment. <laughs> All right. Now, here I go again trying to find. All right. Later, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's Adam's birthday today, 22, 30th of March. And. Uh, it's all good.